We're working our way through a multiple part question on page 299 in our workbook dealing with related rates. Uh, so let's take a look at part two of the problem. So we'll need the information we used in part one. So watch that video if you have not done so already. But we're talking about a 25 foot long ladder that's leaning against the wall of the house and the base of the ladder gets pulled away from the wall at two feet per second. And for part B, they're saying consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, the ladder and the ground. So it's this triangle right there. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall. So as I said, we're going to use a lot of the information from this problem. In fact, the fact that the ladder is seven feet from the wall is so it's not just the same uh, basic concept, uh, but it's the same specific example as well. So we've got that the rate of change dx dt is equal to two because that distance is happening at two uh, feet per second. And we figured out that dy dt is equal to negative seven twelfths feet per second. So that is the, the uh, top of the ladder is approaching the ground at, I guess, seven inches per second um, <clears throat> at, at this moment in time. So let's think about the area of the triangle. So now uh, we've got the same basic idea that X and Y are changing, but the relationship, we're not interested in the relationship between X and Y being the Pythagorean theorem this time. We're interested in computing dA dt. All right, so what is the relationship between the area of the triangle and these two factors? Well, this is a right triangle, so it's very convenient. These are the height and the base. So the relationship between those distances is that the area is one half the base times the height. So A is equal to one half XY. And so to calculate what DADT is, we're just going to differentiate this with respect to, um, with respect to time. And so on this side, we've got DADT and on the other side, we're going to need to use the product rule because we're multiplying X and Y together. And these are both um, terms that vary with respect to time. And so the product rule tells us that this is X times dy dt plus Y times dx dt. And fortunately, we know all of these values from this side of the problem. So X is 7. They told us that dy dt, we solved it over here. It was negative 7 twelfths. y is the height of the ladder at this moment in time, which we decided was 24 feet. And dx dt, they told us that's increasing at two feet per second. So we just substitute all of those values in. So 1 half times 7 times negative 7 twelfths plus 24 times two. All right, and so that's equal to one half and seven times negative seven twelfths is negative 49 twelfths plus 48. And that's equal to, uh, let's see, 48 times one half is 24 minus 49 over 24. And if I do this on my calculator, uh, I've got 24 minus uh, 49 divided by 24. All right, and so that's equal to, uh, to three decimal places, that is equal to 21.958. What's our units for this? <clears throat> if you think about our units, we want to go back to the problem and figure out what we're calculating. We're calculating the change in area over time. So what do we measure area in and what do we measure time in in this problem? Well, area is going to be square feet because we're measuring feet times feet and our unit of time is seconds. So at this moment in time, <clears throat> the area of this triangle is instantaneously changing at a rate of 21.958 square feet per second. 
So this gives you an idea of how we can solve a problem that's got more than one variable when it would be hard to, um, you know, to find a relationship between x and y. It's not a problem, we can just use the product rule. As long as we know dx dt and dy dt, we've got enough variables that we can substitute it into this problem. The reason we had a problem when we were dealing with the problem earlier where we were talking about the volume of the cone is that we didn't specifically calculate the, the, uh, the rate of change of the height over time and the radius over time. So we folded those into a single variable to kind of save us from calculating that extra rate. All right, in the next video, we'll tackle the third part of the problem, which is going to have its own special little twist. So give it a shot before, before you start the next video and see how much progress you can make on it.